My name is Guy Rosenwald. I'm development manager in eBay Israel. With me today is Roma, who is a tech lead in one, one of our group. In eBay, we have a lot of data, really a lot of data, a lot of technologies, and a lot of database, a, a lot of variety of database for relational database, key value database, document database. And recently, in the last 18 months, we start using Neo for some of our projects. Emil talked today in the morning about the Shopbot project, which is very interesting, very cool. Our project is a different one, as cool as the other one. And he's talking about taxonomy management at scale. And we get a little, give you a windows into how it's being done. Okay, we talked, what was our challenge? The main challenge we want to solve is managing business entities. When it's come to manage business entities, we're talking about managing the life cycle of those business entities. You need to create them, you need to update them, you need to delete them, you need to manage the relations among those business entities. And it's not only the relations, it's versioning of those relationships. Those relationships change and you need to monitor them and a versioning of those changes. What are business entities? It can be almost everything. It can be a user, it can be an account, it can be a node, as part of a knowledge graph. Specifically for our project, we are aiming to categories. You all know categories, so you need to create category, you need to merge categories, you need to move categories all around. And of course, you need to find and search on categories. But not only categories, we have aspects. In the slide, you can see the brand and the size aspects. So you need, again, to create aspects merge aspect, move aspect, delete aspect, find, search, and of course you need to relate those aspects to categories. And we also have values, a lot of values, and those values also need to be managed. Curate, merge, update, and be related to aspect and categories. I guess you get the point. It's happened a lot, and we have a lot of entities to manage, and we don't want to have specific solution for each one of those entities. So we come out with a solution, and this is our solution, Entity Management Platform. The main idea is to give out of the box platform that give you the following features. It will give you versioning of each entity. It will give you, give you restoration points for each entity and for all the graph. It will give you the ability to easy model your graph on your data. And of course, it will give you search, CRUD, and cost entity relationship, which is uh, very obvious. But more than this, our clients have really, really, really strict requirement. They want it to be very interactive. They want the designer wants to work with the system and get very fast response time. And there were two things that are very important to them. The first one is isolation of workspaces. They want to have a playground. They want to be able to work in a taxonomy manage, do everything they want without affecting any other user. And in addition, they want to be able to merge those workspaces together that it can be work in the main branch. And in addition, they want inheritance. What, what, is, what is, does it mean inheritance? They want to be able to change a root of, of a, a graph and all the subgraph will be changes according to this change. Why? Because we have a lot of changes like this. So this was the main problem we aim to solve, and we deep dive a little into how we use Neo to solve this problem, and we focus mainly about our modeling and how it's enable us to have versioning, restoration point and isolation of workspaces, and we talk a little about inheritance and how we solve inheritance in a very fast way for our customers. Then, if time permits, go back to uh, QA. Okay, so why we choose Neo4j? Okay, first, performance. <coughs> Doesn't matter how you look at this, in the end, we are going to have more than nine business logics. You need to find all the categories that are related to those aspects and those value and have some kind of display name. We have a lot of entities. We gave you an example of three. We have much more, we get to nine. We found out that the best way to solve for logical joins are traverse. Neo4j is executing traverse very fast. The second one, we have a lot of evolving requirements. The natural flexibility in the Neo enable us to react very fast to changes without effect of any of the consuming layer of the EMP, 
and most important, we don't need to get into project of data migration. Second is developing velocity. For most of the cases, it's very easy to bring someone new, teaching Cyper to understand about now, and it will be able to be productive very fast. And of course, everyone talked before about the community. We have a very nice community. It's very easy to get some assistance. So we talk about now. Let's talk about the modeling, OK? How we decided to model our data. We believe that business entity can be described as composed of two parts. The first part <coughs> is the ID, is the soul of the entity. The moment it's being created, it's never being changed. Okay? The second one is the state. This state can change during the life cycle of this entity. Okay? So let's take me as an example. I'm an entity. I'm from time person. I have an ID, guy, just for simplicity, not using goods here. And I have states. When I was born, I was in the age of zero. In my hobby, where eat, poop, and cry. Okay? Something changed in my life, and I moved forward. Okay? Now I'm the age of five. I have different hobbies. I like to play, I like to game, I like to play games, and I like to eat. Now at the age 15, okay, I like to hobbies, I like to, I, my hobbies were playing, move, uh, watching TV, and again, eat, as you can see, it's pretty constant, the eating part. But something changed when I was 26, okay, long time ago, another entity came to the picture. This entity, again, from Thai person, ID Hila, she has a past, she has different state in her life, and from that moment, we are related, okay? It's become more interesting later, okay? We are related, few is move on, and we have another entity. This time, our son, our first son, Eden, okay? And also, he has an entity, he has a state, he likes to cry, eat, and poop, exactly like his father in that age, you notice? Okay, and it's keep evolving, and now he's 15, he likes to eat, and likes to complain, everyone who know, teenagers, and he's related to another entity. This entity is from type dog, okay? And he likes to roll over, he just doesn't do it when you say it to him, but he likes to roll over. So basically, you can see how we model our data. Every entity is composed of entity and state. You can connect between entity from the same type, and you connect between entity from different types, okay? So, after we use my family as example about our modeling, let's see how it's really being done in eBay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what you are viewing now is the TMS, is our tool to manage all our systems, and here we just show you an example of our categories. So let's assume we look for dogs, and found it is in our category tree, okay? The T and then let's see how it's being modeled in now, okay? So we're searching for, we're searching for this category now, as, as we explained before, now without my son, we have a category, and we have a state, the state contains all the data. It's connected to a different entity, site, and to the state, and you see the state of the site. For simplicity, we move all the parents and a lot of other data. Now let's see what's happened when we manipulate this data. Let's call it dogs workspace two, and we're saving this data. Okay, now we are crying now. Hope you can see, and the people in the back you can imagine, but basically, now we have entity with more than one state, we have the current state, which is dog workspace two, and we have the previous state, which is dogs, okay? You can also start to understand how we implemented version, okay? Now, as you can see, everything happened in workspace two. Let's move to another workspace, workspace four. Okay, we're looking for dogs. You can see this is the same categories according to the ID, people who really remember. So now let's see how these dogs in workspace four it's been described in the database. It's been persisting in the database. So we are selecting for this category. The people who can really have a good eyesight, you can see the version of the workspace on the relation. And again, we have entity and its state. We have a site and its state, okay? So let's do it again. Let's try to modify this uh, category, and we call it dogs workspace four. 
and we save it again. Okay. Now we select and we are going to see two states for this entity. Again, it's one is the dog, which was the previous site, is the original state, and dogs workspace four, which is the current state of the entity. Okay. Now it's very interesting. Now let's see all the state for this entity. Okay. As you can see now, we have more than two states. We have three states. One is the dog. It's the original state in which we all started our workspaces. But each one of the workspaces has another state. Okay. This is enable us to do versioning very fast. It's enable us to have restoration point for all the graph. And more important, it's give us the ability to find differentiation between different workspaces very fast because we need to see only the entities that we touch. And it's enable us to do merge later, but this is beyond the scope of this session, without the need of graphism or physism. Okay? So we're very proud about this design. So let's talk a little about inheritance. As I explained to you, our customers using inheritance a lot. They change a lot of the data, and we want to understand, we wanted to understand how to do it smartly. As we thought about it, there are two ways to do it. One is optimized for write. Every time you want to change a root of a subtree, we change, every time you want to change a, a subtree, so you change the root, and everyone on one time when they understand the value, climb up the ladder until they get to the value. What do you get? A very fast write time. Where do you pay when you need to read? Remember, in eBay we have subtrees that contain hundreds of thousands of entities. For example, categories trees. We have another option. As before, write to the root of the subtree, then propagate the data to all the subtree. What do you get? A very fast read time. Where do you pay? On the right. We didn't like it. So we thought about, why not optimize for both? And we come with an idea. We have a graph database, let's try to use it. And this is what we did. Whenever you want to change a root of a subtree, or just assign a flag to a subtree, we connect the root of the subtree to the flag. How do you calculate the value that is related to the subtree or to each one of those entity? By calculating the shorted pass. For example, the shorted pass from category 22 to flag is going through category two, category zero, and then to the flag, and the value is on the relation, which means for all the categories in this tree, the value for flag one is value one. Pretty simple. What happens if you want to change a subtree? Let's assume we want to change the value for all the subtree that is rooted on category two. What we are going to do then? We are going to add another relation. Okay, so we add the relation from category two to the flag. Now, the, the, all the, the value for category 22 and category two is calculated according to the shorted pass to this flag. This time for category 22 and two is using the, the, the new relation that we added and the value is two. As you can see, we didn't change every, anything for category 11, category one, and category zero. Okay, so again, after use this amorphic example, Let's see how it's really being implemented in our graph. Okay, so let's take an example. We're looking on the magazine category and we're searching for it. All the search is being done natively on now. So we find magazine, which is under all sales, and all sales is under books, as you can see. Let's look on the flags, okay? So let's look on the adult flag, and you don't want to mess with the adult flag, okay? And Jose is inheriting the adult flag from books, and the value is false, the same for magazine. Which means all this subtree is not considered to be an adult category. Let's see how it's being modeled in now. Okay, as, as you can see, what is the shorted pass? You're going from magazine to all sales, from all sales, you are going to books, and from books, you are related to the flag, and you can see the value is on the relation, and the value said it's false. Nothing in this subtree is a dull category. Okay, let's see what's happening if you want to change a subtree. Like the example, we are going to change all sales. We said the value to yes, 
we saving the data and we execute the query. What we are getting now is two paths. We have two paths from magazines to, to the adult flag. One is the new one, the shorter to us, is magazines all says directly to the flag. But the value on the relation was true. All this subtree is adult categories. And as you can see, we didn't change anything else. So if you have a longer pass, you're just going through books and you get everything you got before. What we achieve by choosing this idea? First, the write is very fast. The, anything we did, the only thing we did is adding one relation. Okay, so it's in constant time we were able to change all the values of all this subtree, okay, with one relation. But we didn't neglect the read. All the read is being done using one round trip to the NEO and back. Yes, NEO is doing more things than one operation, but it's doing traverse and finding shorted paths, and NEO is doing this very fast. Okay? So, to summarize, and I did it very fast, but we talk a little about our modeling, and how we are modeling our data, and how we enable versioning and restoration points. We talk a little about inheritance, and why we optimize for the write without neglecting the read. We're working on this for almost 18 months, and we're very proud of what we achieve. But this is just the beginning, okay? Our future challenges, how, how to merge really big graph, and I talk about big graphs, I'm talking about not millions, I'm talking about billions of nodes, and they are coming. And how to, how to manage really, really big scales, much more than billions, that this is where we're aiming to in eBay. So it was fast, so I have time for questions, and if there will be very hard questions, Roma will join me and answer them. So, anyone? But are there any questions? Yes. Oh, it was too quick. Uh, do we have uh, maybe a, also a bit of more, uh, uh, let's say, extensive paper or something on what you did? We can take it offline and we'll explain more. Okay. But cool. some of these are going public as patents in the next few months. Any other questions? Well, I guess not then. Thank, Thank you very you. much.